So we're going to talk about this concept of limiting reagents, um, and it's kind of a tough concept to, you know, to talk about um, unless you relate it a little bit to real life. So anybody that's like an engine junkie or anything like that has probably had a situation where, let's say, that their gas was too rich, right? And one of the things that happens is you'll notice that like your engine will run really rough and a bunch of black smoke will be belching out to the sides. And all of that has to do with this fact that you've kind of set up a limiting reaction, a limiting reagent situation without really knowing it. So keep in mind that when we have a balanced chemical reaction, which by the way, I just balanced, hopefully it's correct, something like this, right, is that these numbers, these coefficients are telling us a molar ratio of everything that needs to come together to run this engine the most efficiently, right? This is just ethanol, right? So I'm pretending I have an ethanol engine, I guess. So it tells me that I need exactly one mole to be reacting with three moles of oxygen gas. Well, it turns out that that's really hard to get that perfect mix, right? And so what we're gonna have to do is we actually are probably gonna start with some just, you know, given quantity of oxygen gas and uh, with um, ethanol. So let me just kind of make up a couple of different numbers, right? Totally off the top of my head. And I'll show you how you can approach these limiting reagent type questions. So here's just some numbers that I made up, right? Let's say that we knew we had 20 grams of this and 7.5 grams of oxygen, but we need to know which one is present in excess, right? It turns out that because this one to three ratio is all in terms of moles, guess what the first step you're gonna do is convert everything to moles. Um, this guy, right, we're going to convert this guy into some number of moles using the formula weight of that thing. We're gonna convert this guy into the number of moles of O2, and then we're gonna take a very, the very next step to actually change so that those mole amounts are the same units so that we can actually make a comparison. Comparison, so bear with me. Okay, so what we've done is we've calculated using the molar masses. I didn't actually show the steps, but we should know how to do that already. Um, to determine the number of moles of each one of these things, right? Remember, anytime we're given grams, we're pretty much going to convert to moles using uh, uh, molar mass. And so now, though, we have a situation where we're kind of comparing apples to oranges, and we're not sure which one of these is truly the limiting reagent, right? Which one of these is going to limit the amount of product that we form? Um, and it all is going to depend on this one to three relationship. And some people are a little better at doing this than others. Um, but let me show you kind of the fail safe way of comparing apples and oranges here to determine uh, what the actual limiting reagent is. So what we've done is I've taken just one at random, right? I don't know which one is limiting. Um, so I'm just going to let my brain run free, which is kind of dangerous. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this value that was based on that 20 grams and convert it into the number of moles of oxygen that that thing would need, right? And I'm gonna compare that number of moles to the number of moles of O2 that I end up with. So the real question, as always, is what number goes where? Well, this is a mole over mole looking thing. So that tells me that I have to look at my balanced chemical reaction. What number goes where? Well, the one is gonna go with this unit, the three is gonna go here. And so I'm going to do that number times three, and I'll actually, let's see, I'll, I'll draw it in black down here, and then we'll compare uh, both of those numbers. I did the calculation, it turns out that that number of moles of ethanol would require that many moles of O2. One of the things that you'll see is that I supplied the system with not nearly enough O2. Right? And so now we have two numbers that we can directly compare and determine which one of these is going to limit the total amount of product that I can form and also which one of these reagents is in, in excess, or I should say reactants are in excess. Turns out that in this case, because that requires so much more, it turns out that these values are telling me that O2 in this case is the limiting reactant. And as I said, when your gas is too rich, right? It means you have too much fuel there. And so this is a perfect example of where that's happening. This uh, reactant, right? Oops, sorry, that right there, that 20 grams, that's gonna be more than enough, right? I 
I flooded the uh, carburetor uh, intake, basically. And this thing is then termed an excess reagent. Right, so we have the limiting reagent, right, which is going to dictate how much product uh, we're going to form. So now if I wanted to, I could uh, use that mole amount to determine how many moles of CO2 that I formed and how many grams of CO2 I, I, I could have formed. Um, and then there'll be a certain amount of this excess reagent that's just kind of, you know, hanging out, not reacting in the carburetor compartment. So limiting reagents, it really is just kind of an applied uh, molar ratio kind of uh, problem um, and really does come down to just taking any number in grams, converting into moles. And then that final step is to take at least one of these things and convert them into the moles of the other thing and just do a co direct comparison. Whichever one is smaller is called the limiting reagent. Hope this helps. If you have questions about it, uh, I'd be more than happy to show you a couple of more of these uh, questions uh, in office hours. You'll certainly have some on your um, sapling homework. Woohoo! I decided to add this last little simulation uh, just because a lot of times when you talk about limiting reagents, you kind of get lost in the numbers. There's so many concepts going on there with like molar masses and moles and balanced chemical reactions and all that. I just thought this would kind of help to make some uh, bridges to kind of what all of this like symbology actually means in, in terms of what's actually going on. So here's a reaction, right? We've got reactants and then the product. And what you'll notice here is that these two reactants are required in a one to three molar ratio. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of arbitrarily throw a bunch of these into the system, right? And so you can notice here that my um, my ratio is definitely not one to three, right? In fact, this is a two to three ratio. So this is a great example of a limiting reagent type question, right? Obviously, the fact that when I go from kind of the what the world started to what the world now is, you'll notice that there are these two nitrogen molecules just kind of hanging out here, right? And so that's a perfect example of where you know, that's great that I started the system with, you know, I tried to do a two to three ratio or I kind of, I put too much nitrogen in there. So what the heck happens to it? Well, it just can't react, right? There's not enough hydrogen around for these two um, nitrogens to actually react. That means that this, right, is, this is uh, going to be considered by limiting reagent. And that's something that really confuses students, right? Because they'll kind of just look at the total numbers here and say like, well, this one has six and that only has four. Yeah, but the actual ratio that's required is one to three. So even though there is more hydrogen gas present, it turns out that there's not enough, right? In order to have enough to make all the ammonia that we need to make, right? This being ammonia right here, you'll notice that, well, I've got these two additional nitrogen molecules, right? That's the excess reagent. And so in order to get this thing to react, right, I have to essentially add another six hydrogen molecules, right? In other words, I need three hydrogen molecules for this. I need three hydrogen molecules for that. And when I do that, so let's get this to count up to six and it will go there. One, two, three. Oh, no, it won't go there. Sorry. <laughs> um, but anyway, you can see that, um, you know, th this is some place that, you know, it hopefully will give you kind of a better idea of what this whole limiting reagent thing is talking about. Let's try one of the other simulations. So here's another example, right? We've got a one to two ratio that's required. And so as long as I'm keeping this ratio as one to two, you'll notice that I just keep making more and more uh, product and there is no leftover, right? And so this is a perfect example of, of a non-limiting reagent um, type of reaction. Well, it turns out if I take any one of these things and don't add uh, any more, you'll notice that now I have a limiting reagent type question. This the amount of O2 gas is represented by these two uh, red spheres is limiting, right? It's not allowing all of the ammonia, sorry, all of the methane that could potentially react to react. What I would need is another two uh, oxygen molecules, 